Let's take another look at a, uh, a completely different form, solea. Solea comes from the word soleares or soledad. Soledad means solitude. So, you know, seguiría, in contrast, is like really, it's all about death and tragedy and, and you know, great inner pain and suffering of, you know, describing losses and so on. Solea, it, you know, can be tragic. It's a little bit... Uh, it's more melancholic than tragic, all right. And so, solea is one of those uh, those moods that you sort of, you know, when you're feeling alone and you want to be alone and you want to, you know, just kind of connect with your own self and really find out who you are. You know, that's what solea is all about, all right. That kind of mood. So, solea is what I played at the beginning of the video, and so you know the, the rhythm of it is as follows. It's also a twelve beat. And, uh, and this 12 beat has a very different kind of outline, all right? Um, the way, th there's been kind of a few evolutions in how this outline uh, has developed in terms of accentuation and phrasing, okay? So I'll first explain the really basic, the more old school type of solea and how it evolved, okay? So, uh, let's see. We got 12 beats, just like in Seguiria, but the division is very, very different. We have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, then eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? So we got accents on three, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So the unusual thing here about the, 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 the this nature of this form is that Usually in music, whether it's jazz or classical music or even Indian music or, you know, Brazilian music, all these uh, styles, the, the, when you say one, okay, or the first beat of, of any of these styles of music, for the most part that I'm aware of, the first beat is what's accented, okay? The number one is strong and, and so on. Here, the, it's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The twelve is an accent, and the one is not an accent. Yet it's still one. That's where the be that's where the phrase begins. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So all the the musical phrasing, the rhythmic rhythmic phrasing that happens inside this rhythmic form. Uh, follows this particular outline. Of course, the more progressive you get, the more fancy you get, the more you start negotiating and playing, you know, with this rhythm, with, with what they call offbeats, contratiempos, okay? And, uh, and that makes music, of course, more interesting and it's, it's less predictable. But the more traditional flamenco is, you know, more predictable and more clear in terms of its phrasing on the downbeat versus fooling around and getting, you know, all you know, modern and everything and, and, uh, and looking for excitement and surprises in the offbeats, okay? Although, of course, that's, you know, that's fun and it's very, very interesting to do that, explore that, and I, I do it and I encourage it, of course, but not before you understand how everything works on a basic level. Um, so, again, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then twelve, one, two, Three, okay, so you want to practice that you can do it with palmas. All right, that's another very important. That's probably the, not probably for sure, <laughs> the first percussion instrument in flamenco. And who knows, maybe even cavemen did this before they did anything else, right? So the palmas is a very, very important element in flamenco. Even you know, it certainly preceded the guitar. Um, so we have uh, two types of palmas actually: palmas sordas. Right? It's done like that, with the two palms of the hands meeting and creating a vacuum. A lower vacuum, so it has a lower sound. Okay? And then you have palmas claras. Alright? And that's done by having the upper part of the three fingers. Some people do it with four. Some people, ideally, you're supposed to do it with three fingers. And you kind of create a vacuum here in the center of the palm. There you go. You have to really hit it in the right area to get that clear pop. All right. So these are the two types of palmas that are used in flamenco, okay, in marking the compass. So if you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. So you may notice that I kind of got a little fancy with the, with the palmas. I wasn't exactly just hitting the beats. And that's because um, when you do flamenco for, you know, for a while, you, you, you can't just play you know, straight beats. One, two, three, four. You know, of course, yeah, you have to do that to learn it. But really, there's a certain musicality that emanates from, from the compass, from the rhythm, that eventually it just becomes part of a language. You know? So, okay, let's get back a little bit more to basics. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then twelve. One. See, already <laughs> you want to go somewhere else. All right. Um, so this is the very first um, understanding of the rhythmic skeleton of 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 the of the compass of solea. So this kind of evolved into the following. The accent shifted from six to seven. So now we got one, two, three, four. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here you kind of notice how, uh, I'm sure you've recognized by now, that there's a certain beginning, a middle, and then closing. And what's very important to understand about flamenco, that what distinguishes it from other forms, in my opinion, is that it has a very circular type of uh, motion to it, in terms of the phraseology, as opposed to melodies and other forms of music. You know, in classical music and jazz, it's the, the, the kind of the structure of a, of a typical theme you know, is four bars or eight bars, and it has a kind of a more linear uh, understanding or approach to it. Whereas in one compass of flamenco, in 12 beats, you can make an entire musical statement, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, this is one bar, okay, and you have, it's, it's long enough, and it has enough inner accentuations and inner differences that it permits you to, you know, make a statement that has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. All right, and that's true for, you know, pretty much most of the forms, uh, all the rhythmic forms, for sure. All right, so that's solea. Uh, let's take a look at another form. Um, for example, tientos. <laughs> 